Hi everyone, good news. We're back for our year 12 digital media course and today I'm going to be looking at target audience and specifically the factors that help us decide who our target audience is. Before I get started too much into it, I want to recap what we did last time round. I asked you to use a textbook to investigate this company here, Welshmarker. The Watchmaker is a coffee shop chain in South Wales. They were creating a logo for their new brand. They really wanted it to scream to a particular audience and had to have a different, a certain outlook on, on what their brand is. Now I should create uh, a SWOT analysis, some mind map, some ideas. Today we're moving over the page <coughs> and we're looking at target audience factors. So a target audience can come in various different flavors. Not only do, does Welsh Mocker have its own customer base, which are a target audience of their brand, but we also have a target audience as media professionals. The target audience that we're appealing to is our clients. Okay? We need to make sure that what we produce is good for our client, and what's good for our client is something that appeals to their customers. The way we think about that, we break it down into various different factors and try and talk through what that might look like okay it's a really good idea at this stage to start thinking about who the audience is by focusing on one person thinking of one person imagining them giving them a name talking through their backstory and why they would want my product is a really good way to just really narrow your focus of course coffee is a product that is aimed at a very wide range of people it's not something that should be excluded in any ways. So what we need to think about is socioeconomic groups, age, gender, ethnicity, psychographics, uh, geodemographics, sexual orientation, and whether or not it's mainstream or niche. And I go through each of these in turn, but to cut to the chase, your task for this week is to write your answers to this activity here. In addition to that, and in a separate video, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some of our upcoming coursework. And I'm going to ask you to think about this uh, task when you're looking at it. So let's go through those factors to start off with. Social economic groups are the idea is that an individual could have a certain wealth, income, class, um, upper middle and working classes are uh, terms that you may be familiar with. We use the term socioeconomic because it means the economic side of it, about how much money someone has or earns or has access to, but it's also a social class, the sorts of people and groups that you mix with. You can start to think about these by using the um, ABC um, categories that we talked about in our unit one. But for social economic classes, we can suggest that maybe people from a higher wage have much more disposable income. We would suggest that they are of a higher class than perhaps working classes. The working classes are not bad, but they are people that we would assume here would have a lower social economic um, output. They're going to have a less disposable income. A higher social economic class is more likely to have disposable income to buy a coffee that costs four or five pounds. Whereas we may assume that someone from a lower social economic grouping is going to have less disposable income and perhaps would suggest that oh, I'll just make coffee at home or I'll, I'll get some from work from the canteen there rather than going to a takeout cafe. Age. Age is something that also comes into play for these particular ones here as well. So in terms of age, what we're looking at, oh, there we go, go up a little bit higher. Nope. Um, I need to learn how to use this online textbook. There we go. Um, in terms of age, we can break things down into, into groups. We should try to be very, very careful of, of making our groupings too wide or too narrow. It's not useful to aim something at 14 year olds or anyone over the age of 40. Those are very broad and very narrow. We try to work out what specifically is going to be a good target audience. In terms of a coffee shop, well, of course, they're not going to stop anyone buying a product in there. If an eight-year-old went in there with a couple of pounds and asked for a bottle of water, 
they're not going to turn them away. And if a 90 year old goes in there and asks for a mocha, then equally they're going to sell the product. But what is it aimed at? We can make a guess just by taking a look at what they wrote here. When we look at the audience and purpose, we read through these sorts of things here. Not only have they given us a, a rough age group here, but they also start to talk about the vibe, the feel of their restaurant, their coffee shops, okay? What sort of appeals to them? <coughs> and from that, you may be able to make an educated guess as to where we're looking at. Gender. Now, coffee is not particularly a gender-focused product, but for your exam and for future pieces of coursework, it's important to understand what products are and are not advertised for genders. In modern society, the vast majority of adverts you're going to see don't try to pick and choose. They're going to try and make sure that the product is aimed for the widest group possible. But of course, there are some products which are very specific by their very nature and advertise as solely at women or solely at men. Now, those sorts of products will need to make sure that they are appealing to that group in some way. That may be by reinforcing their own gender stereotypes or in any other sorts of ways. So for ethnic groups, uh, I'll just zoom into this bit up here. What we're looking at in terms of ethnicity is very much the idea of culture and heritage, as well as the, the ones that maybe initially come to your head, like race and religion, okay? So cultures and, and the heritage of a group of people can be very diverse. Um, and there are some things in society that many people will be very, very aware of. For instance, a person who has lived in Britain for the, all their life and has family that has lived in Britain for all of their life will understand certain societal words and terms and phrases, perhaps a catchphrase from a comedy show or the fact that a particular football team is always the best football team, they're always winning stuff. They're going to know those things perhaps more than someone with a different background. That's not to say that we it's it's, uh, it's something that you need to sort of pander to, but it is an important thing that if you use phrases and words that mean something to a very particular group, it can mean that it, it completely misses with someone else. We don't need to make everything appeal to everyone, but it's worth noting. There are lots of brands that will try to appeal to maybe a youth market or to a particular demographic group, but they will have a very different outlook on where their lives have been. Now, as someone born in the 1980s, I have a good knowledge of TV shows and comedies and music from the 1990s and 2000s and a little bit of working knowledge of stuff maybe perhaps from the 70s or something like that from my parents talking about it. But if there was a particular song or words or phrase that was mentioned that was very, very popular in the 1950s, then that's something that I would have no common heritage, uh, heritage knowledge of. I don't really, uh, I didn't grow up with my grandparents. I wouldn't have known that unless it was something that was obviously famous like Elvis, okay? That would maybe goes over some people's heads, who knows? But talking about this here, this ethnicity, the heritage, the race, religious terms, languages, that are big, we want to make sure that we're really, really careful. Some words as well, which in English are fine or indeed nonsense just gibberish um, in other cultures of language they may sound like something else they may mean other things they may not have the same context that someone who is a native speaker would put on it so we ha we do want to make sure that in terms of ethnic groups it's not just about not causing offense it's about making sure that our message hits home that actually what we're saying is what people are hearing Okay, so psychographics, our next one here. This is the factor that affects an individual's perception of themselves. What do you think about yourself? Okay, are you an outgoing individual? Are you a shy person? Are you someone that really likes this? Have you got a real passion or an interest in this? Are you a football fan? Okay, by looking at the idea of the sorts of things that people are into, we can get an idea of who they are. This psychographics can transcend age, gender, ethnicity, and socioeconomic groups. <clears throat> Just because I may have been from a particular group or a particular area of the country, I may have an interest in something that is shared with someone else. 
So psychographics is the sort of people who are into that uh, idea. Is there a common psychographic for people who want to go and buy coffee from a shop? Maybe, and that's one of the questions, so I'm going to leave it be. But I'd like you to think about the idea of someone that goes to do that. I will state really clearly for the record that my grandparents would probably completely dislike the idea of going and buying coffee from a shop. They would see that as a complete waste of money. Something like coffee to be bought as a takeout for four or five pounds, they would see that as a complete waste of money. It's something that I will probably do. It's something that I have done, definitely for sure. And it's because we have a different outlook on the way that works. Geodemographics. So geodemographics is all about location. It's about location, about where things are, the effect of nationality, of nationalism, perhaps. We've got a company called Welsh Mocker. I'm expecting to see this one in your answer somewhere. So sexual orientation down the bottom here. So sometimes it's one that people get caught up on. Sexual orientation in this sense here is not just that we're advertising for a particular orientation, but also we're not excluding. Um, we're making sure that we're not in any way belittling. We're definitely onto legal implications of that as we go through the project. Um, it perhaps would have been seen relatively common, let's say 40, 50, maybe as close as 20 years ago for sexual orientation to be considered a joke. Okay, to be considered something that can be laughed at, especially in advertising and marketing terms, something that was seen as taboo, something that you didn't want to admit or talk a little bit about. These days, it's definitely a much more, much easier and much fairer and much more representative, which is obviously a good thing for most people. Okay, what we want to do is make sure that our target audience, not only different preference of groups affected products are, but also the style of language and imagery in the product. We're not making over stereotypes. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into that because we probably know many of these and I want to keep this nice PG-13 appropriate on YouTube. But in terms of talking about sexual orientation there, what we definitely want to do is to make really poor taste jokes. Okay, mainstream versus niche. So products can either be mainstream or niche <clears throat> for the most part. A mainstream product is something that is advertised and is desired by a majority of the audience. Something that is considered so trivial uh, to be, yeah, everyone has these. It's quite conventional to want to see something like that, okay? So a mainstream product could be something like, I don't know, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, this pen, my glasses, okay? These are different things that would be seen by people and, and quite mainstream, okay, that they would, that people would want that sort of product, that we're aiming at a very wide range. You'd often see that advertisements for those sorts of products seem to be quite general, they don't offend, they're not controversial, uh, they're always usually quite positive and happy. In terms of a media product here, mainstream success is nice. It's good, it's okay. Niche is a group, is a, when we advertise a product or try and get a product to a smaller and specific group. And that's can be different to mainstream because a niche taste is something that some people are massive fans of and perhaps other people not so interested in. The idea of niche could be done in terms of music. We can definitely do that by particularly rather than music that not if everyone likes, but at the very least they are tolerant of listening to it. It's background noise. But I can definitely include certain bands, artists that are going to be very specifically targeted to a particular group. Okay. And all of a sudden by including that group, then I might be excluding an entire audience who are absolutely going to switch off completely. Okay, if I were to put the latest number ones from Radio One Extra on my marketing product, my film TV show that I'm going to make, then my grandparents are probably going to roll their eyes and think it's not for them. And equally, if I fill it with the sounds of big band 1940s brass band music, then my granddad's going to be stood up going, oh, this looks interesting, and my young son is going to not pay attention at all. Mainstream versus niche is very important to work out. 
who is my product aimed at? Okay, so your activity. I would like you to look at the Welsh Mocker uh, client brief again. I want you to identify three audience considerations, so three of those factors that we've just talked about that would be most important for uh, us to consider when creating this media product. Okay, we're going to explain how they could affect the design of my product, what it might change, and what sort of things should I include, or you know, just things to be to be mindful of. For my students, I want this work completed as a write-up. I would expect around about half a page, perhaps, of text for this one, and I'd like it submitted on Microsoft Teams. For those of you who are listening to this elsewhere on the internet, then your teacher will tell you where they would like their work submitted. Thank you very much, and goodbye.